So NeurIPS was about a week or two ago. Um, and as a part of NeurIPS, there's a great workshop on machine learning for creativity and design. Um, it was a one-day conference this year with lots of great speakers. Uh, it's sort of curated and organized by some of my favorite people in the ML art world. Um, and as a part of the conference, so they've got one day that's all speakers and, and people displaying sort of new work and uh, talking about their papers they wrote and that sort of thing. Um, but alongside that, they also do an art gallery. Um, so every year they take submitted work from online uh, and they curate sort of the best of the best. Um, so I thought it would be cool to sort of go through some of the projects here. Um, it's at AIArtOnline.com. Um, I want to talk about three projects in this particular video. I might talk about more uh, in the near future. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of face projects, right? So uh, lots of people doing some faces. Um, that kind of makes sense, you know, faces being a pretty popular topic around machine learning and just art in general. Um, but there's three in particular that I really want to talk about. Um, and I think they, they do stuff that are a little bit different, things outside of what I would usually see people doing with machine learning. Um, some of those are like, I feel like we see a lot of style again where like models are transferred, learned from FHQ and while they look great, uh, it's like, I don't know, it's like not the most uh, interesting or like new phenomenon. Um, that's not to say it's bad, it's just to say it's not uh, new stuff that I've seen. Um, but there are three projects in here that I think are really, really interesting and I want to talk about those for a minute. Um, so the first one is Joel Simon and Tal Shiri. Uh, and the way this project works is, actually let me just pull up Derivative Works. This is the website for it. Um, we'll go back one and we'll just grab one of these. So uh, you can sort of see there's like these like images that are excited and they sort of like, uh, they should be creating faces. Um, this one's pretty clear, like this one's sort of got the nose here, the mouth here. Um, some of them are a little bit more abstract. Uh, yeah, I can sort of see, oh, it's like sort of the, the, the profile for a lot of these. And this one's cool because it sort of uses the inverse of a nose. Um, I just think this project is really, really cool. And I think it's doing something that I haven't seen a lot of people deal with, which is um, they describe sort of the process here, which is that they use um, a DC GAN, which is just like a, a traditional like sort of GAN model um, to generate uh, this train of Perlin noise. And that generates these patches. And these patches are essentially, um, if we click on one of these, um, it's sort of taken from a source material. So it's a collage using this. Once they have the collage pieces, then what they're sort of doing is they're just... Um, they're taking the pieces and they're using a uh, face detection model um, and doing almost like a, a loss function where they're sort of seeing how far uh, removed this is from um, from a correct sort of like face detection model. Um, and then they're sort of exciting. You can sort of see like as they get excited, they sort of are moving around. Um, and they do that until they generate a face. Um, I just think this is a really, really interesting project because you know it's not, it's not trained on faces. Um, it's using a face detection model uh, to do something different. Um, I just think it's really cool and it's not something I'd seen before. Um, and it's really, really clever technique and it's also like a cool sort of use of collage. Um, so that's the first one I want to show. I think I just think it's really interesting and, um, you know, just the whole process is, is pretty fascinating. Um, the next project is actually fairly similar, um, but its output looks so dramatically different. Um, and this is what I like about sort of seeing how people have different outputs and those sort of things. Uh, this one's by Maddie Mariansky. Um, and what this one is doing is actually it's taking that same concept, right, of like uh, what is, um, how closely related are these two faces um, or, you know, tracking the loss uh, function of a face. And it's sort of doing a thing, I assume it's like using processing or some other uh, generative tool to draw these lines. Um, and over time, the model learns, uh, you know, so basically you, you draw a bunch of random squiggle lines and the model determines like which one of these are most face-like. And then it uses that batch of the most face-like ones to sort of do another training process, right? So it's like a, an evolutionary algorithm. Um, and then it keeps generating these until it, you know, it gets further and further along the process until basically it can keep generating faces. Um, and again, so this is using almost the exact same technique as uh, Joel Simon and Tal Shiri's project, but it's such a different output. Um, and it's, again, it's using faces without having to take a bunch of people's faces that you scrape off the internet and train on them. Um, I mean, it's using a process that already does that, but it is using a process that is sort of like removed from that, right? Like I don't see someone's face here, but it's been trained on a bunch of data. Um, so I just think it's really, really fascinating. And I love the difference between outputs between this and the other project, right? The other one is so much more collage. You can sort of make out the faces. Um, and this one's almost even more abstract, right? Like this one, I can totally see. Um, this one, I can kind of understand it. Uh, this one, I really don't get the face at all, but it's really interesting that like the model sees a face in it. Um, so I just love these two projects in combination because they're so contrasting in their output. 
but actually the way they're built is, is fairly similar. And the last project I want to talk about is this one, which is uh, Golan Levin and Ling Dong Huang. Uh, I hope I pronounced that name right. I probably did not. Uh, and what I love about this one is, so I, when I first saw this, I thought it was using a similar process. I thought it was using some sort of like model detection to learn, uh, to guess whether an image was both right side up and right side down, like a good loss function um, or an objective on, on sort of a, a face detection model, but it's actually easier than that, which I think is really, really clever. So they actually talk a lot about uh, what the process is here, and I won't read this in case you want to go through it and find it yourself, but they did actually try this same process, or they tried to train a GAN uh, and uh, track loss functions of both upside down and right side up, and they said they had a lot of issues with it. Um, I think it was using DC GAN or something, and that's um, probably not that surprising because DC GAN is a little bit of an older model and it just doesn't work as well as you might expect. Um, and instead, what they did the second time, which they got better results with, which I think is so clever, is they actually just flipped images upside down and they used Style GAN's um, projection model to actually project an image that uh, is the right side, or is the upside down image, right? And that makes total sense because when you project something into FFHQ, FFHQ is right side up. So it's going to try to define both images at the same time, right? Its model only knows how to draw images right side up, but it's been fed an image as upside down. And that generates this ambigram, which is a face that works both upside down and right side up. Um, really, really clever usage of projection that I would, would have never thought about before. Um, so again, it's like I saw these three things and I was like, these must be related, but actually like the way they're related is sort of interesting, um, but they're also really unrelated in their own way. Um, and that's what I think is just really, really fascinating about these three projects. Um, I think there are lots of other really cool face models, but a lot of them are you know, transfer learning off of a, off FHQ or using FHQ to do some talking or doing a face detection model to do something else with it. Um, and I just think these three projects sort of, to me, in like really, like to me, they're really uh, a perfect vision of sort of creativity and using the, these basic other tools, but a way to sort of twist them and take a unique uh, like point of view on them. Um, so I'll probably do maybe another video or two on some of the other projects that, that I see here that I think are really great. Um, but in the meantime, take a look at uh, the website, um, take a look at those three models I talked about, and uh, let me know what you think. Um, thanks, I'll see you next time.